Welcome back to the 14 day challenge. I have Lisa Benson with us today talking about automation. This is going to be very interesting. As I've been saying, this series has been put together because everyone needs to do lots of little things in their business to make a big difference. And every episode is really important to um, what you need to do in your business. But this one in particular, I think is something that is such a powerful episode because there's a lot of new things going on when it comes to AI and automation. And so I want you to listen on in because Lisa is definitely an expert in this area and she's going to be able to help you. Lisa works with veterans and she helps a lot of people who have not had any experience with AI and automation. She helps them set their businesses up with automation. So she's going to be able to help us today understand automation in a better way. So Lisa, thank you for joining us today. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. No problems. I'm really glad that you accepted my invite because when I heard about you, I thought we need to have you on here. So thank you. And I want to get jump straight into it. We want to talk about automation tools. So what I want to know is um, what sort of automation tools are important for business today? The biggest thing is having a project management tool that you can actually put all of your ideas in. A lot of small businesses like to use Google Docs, which is great but you lift the weight with Google Docs. You lift the weight when you use a spreadsheet. Whereas if you develop, um, you can put it in a ClickUp, Asana, or things like that. You can build out all those tasks with the subtasks. And as you go through, one, those tasks automate, update, times and dates change for you. But two, some of that stuff is already in place. And you can, ClickUp specifically is one that I use. Um, there's some AI features that are available in there that can even help you build out the workflows. Um, and then another one that we love to use is Go High Level because you can build out the automations and workflows in there. And with that, you don't have to keep up with those emails. You know, if somebody signs up, I know a lot of us use Calendly. Um, when somebody signs up for that meeting and all the follow-up emails, all those things are preset for you. People even get texts. People get all those things in place. And you can set that in place to make you so successful and gives you back hours and hours and hours in your day. Yeah, that's so true. Um, I started doing online marketing 24 years ago and I set up an email automation funnel. I've got a video where I talk about it when MailChimp had just come out and I had a web developer actually build me out an actual um, automated funnel. And at the time we didn't have names for it like that. So now I can name it. And people said to me at the time, what on earth are you doing? This is crazy. I spent over $2,000 building it out and took weeks to get a developer to do it. And the way we had to talk between MailChimp and like um, my website, it was crazy. And so that was done. And the amount of time and money that went into it was unbelievable. But I managed to sell that business because of the automation behind it. And I was, I actually moved to Spain when I still had it. And I was actually getting emails. And this is before payments online. PayPal had just started doing online payments. So I had a PayPal button in there saying, pay your deposit here. And I moved to Spain and I still had people paying while I was sleeping. So I was waking up in the morning in Spain because the business was in Australia. And I was like, cha-ching, 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 all of this money coming through. And I'm like, this is amazing. So I know automating things back from there when no one was doing it yet. So the things that we can do these days is just mind blowing. And even just that simplest thing that you say is the calendar, just adding in those features like Calendly. That's why like Calendly is old school now, because when you've got other features, other systems that do it in a better way is that, yes, you can do that one email through Calendly and it sends a reminder, but there are other things that you can put in place. The next email and the next email, it just makes it so much easier when you've got a whole system all in one to do it. Absolutely. That's one of the great things about high level. Granted, you can't make it a complete task management system like you can a click of Asana, et cetera. But you can, if somebody comes into your the website funnel that you're talking about, they can do that. Plus, if they hit certain spots on your website, then they can get another email or another message related to that. And you can stay top of mind for your customers or your potential customers. And that is essential for business growth. Yeah, to touch on that one a bit, because that's something that um, I actually don't use that feature very often, but that's a really good point is that when people visit different parts of your website or different pages, that you can have automatic emails. And we talk about that. I've done a lot in e-commerce and if someone and everyone listening would know this from e-commerce in the way of you put something in your shopping cart, you don't buy it, you get an email saying you left this in your cart. And that's the way 
for that to be done. But you're talking about something that's not e-commerce related, which I think a lot of people don't realize this is the thing. So do you want to explain that in a little bit more detail? Because this, I think, is really powerful. You can create trigger links anywhere um especially if you build a, a site in wordpress and if if you've got your google analytics set up or whatever analytics software you have most of us use google analytics because it's kind of the the end all i won't say end all be all but it is the prime thing that most businesses use you can set up triggers and when you set up that trigger you can then also link that into your high level if you have click zendesk all those things you can develop checks and balances within your within your website. So if somebody clicks on your blog and they just click directly onto um, my latest blog, I think was marketing strategies for veterans. So if they click on marketing strategies for veterans, as soon as they hit the read more, I can send out a message that says, Hey, I noticed that you were reading my blog. I'd love to hear more about what you have going on in your business or what you, where you are in life, whatever you want to do, you can create those follow-up messages. Just make sure that, you're using your voice. That's the biggest thing I think um, with some of the automations and some of the things that people put in place, they get so wanting to check the box of getting it done and they use the uh, they use AI to do it, which is a great tool. But AI isn't, you need to make sure that it's human. You need to make sure it sounds like you. No, and I'm the same. Yeah, I use AI and I recommend it a lot, but the last thing you wanted to do is sound like a different person. Or something. So definitely it needs to sound like you. Um, so we've touched on the, the there's trigger links as well, but what other tools, like how does a company or business decide what tools they should be thinking about? If people are listening going, this sounds too much, there must be a couple of tools that you recommend or how do people work out what they should be using? I usually refer um, or refer people to ClickUp because they have free free for up to five people. I like free. Free is good, um, especially for small businesses, um, because then you're not overwhelmed by the payment and worried about the payment while you're building out. I use High Level. That's ninety seven dollars a month, but it has all of your marketing stuff in it from from looking at your analytics to looking at your ads to looking or creating your emails, creating your automations creating your content. I don't know if you've talked about doing content and batch content before. So if people like to batch their content, they can build it out in there. If you have people that need to approve it, like if you have a VA doing work for you and you need to approve it, there's actually approval places in there as well so that you can go in and make sure it says what you want it to say. I use two main pieces of software plus Slack. And that's just so that I don't have my communication with my team in high level or in ClickUp other than things that pertain to the task in ClickUp. Because if you, I'm sure we've all been there where you just keep writing notes back and forth, back and forth and back and forth and the task gets lost. Definitely. I've, I've got one of those feeds at the moment with a client of mine and it's driving me a little bit insane. So I know exactly that feeling. So from your experience, what are three main tasks that people should take care of first when it comes to automation? Oh, that is a good one. Um, I, I think email follow-up is a huge one, huge, because that's where we spend most of our time is in our inbox. That's where we waste our time. Um, then the other would be, well, to me, email follow-up and SMS follow-up fall into the same category, because if you're able to communicate with the leads quickly, you're able to get, you're able to serve people faster. I don't look at getting them in as a client, I look at serving them um, because I do think that you do better service to people if you think about serving them rather than thinking about bringing them in and I'm going to sell them. Um, another thing would be the initial response on social media. Uh, I do have, if somebody is in my inbox, there's a quick little response that's an automated response that you can build out in your social media. Um, if not, you can build out in just about any piece of software. And then the third one would be developing your, I do a daily stand up, the task for the day, developing that with it automatic when my tasks are complete the next day, when I come into my click up, my tasks for the day are set up. So my day is kind of built out for me without me having to spend the first hour trying to, trying to work in my business rather than on my business. Cause I do a, day, a power hour every morning with a, a friend of mine and we get on and we work on our business 
so that we can generate leads because it's more important to bring people in and be able to serve more than it is to always be working in the space. Because once your clients, once you mature past your clients or your clients mature past you, you have to backfill with somebody. Mm. No, I really like that. So I've got in day three of the challenge, I talk about um, structuring your plan properly and having a structure and actually organizing your day properly. So do you want to tell us a little bit more about that, how people can, what you do when it comes to automating what you're going to be doing the next day? What's the little process there? So I have some high level tasks that I put into uh, and high level, not meaning the software, high level, meaning big tasks for the business. Um, And that could be as simple as balancing the books. All of that stuff. I have those tasks built out the same way we do in all of our software. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll pivot the table in ClickUp and have it give me a daily standup of all the tasks that I need to do. And before them, I have listed as A, B, C, and D tasks. A are mandatory, got to get them done. So in the task name, I do that. And B is really would be good to have done. C is, okay, if I've got time and D, if, if, if there's, nothing else going on, spend some time on me. And that's kind of when they come up in my daily standup, I can prioritize them by the ABCD. And it has, doing that has one, like I said earlier about automation, giving me time back. A lot of those tasks are already automated. So all I have to do is go in and make sure everything is operating as, as possible. So it's a little bit of a heavy lift when you're developing your automations at the front end. But once you get them in place, Things that used to take me three to four hours to complete a couple tasks are now taking me less than an hour, sometimes even just a half an hour because I'm not trying to find things. And one of the things you can do in the automated tasks, if it's it's balancing your books and QuickBooks, is literally put the link in the the task. So all you do is open it up, do what you have to do, close it. Wow, fantastic. It doesn't always mean that it's going to do all the work for you, but if it takes the thinking out of some of it, it gives you time. It gives you, it, it makes you feel like you can breathe. Yeah. And I think that that's the the thing that people get scared off by is the um, automating tasks might sound really daunting, but I think if like I was taught, find the ones, the tasks that you really do repeat on a regular basis, start with those ones, automate those ones and then move on to the ones that you don't do as often. And you just, every couple of days, you automate a couple of things to get it down to a point where you don't have to do them all the time. Yep. That's my Mondays. Yeah. Mondays are the day where I go in because your my brain is fresh. I go in and I automate the tasks. Uh, or I automate two to three new tasks. I don't do five anymore, but I did, I did used to do five, but I did find when I started doing the ABCD that that actually eliminated. I knew that if an A task came up, and I needed to prioritize creating the automation, I knew which ones I needed to automate. I wasn't trying to find, look at what tasks to automate. So A is our first when I'm trying to automate something. B is our next, same way I do as far as time management for the day. So I've been saying during this series that I'm going to learn so much myself, and I have already. I'm, I've been learning so much from all my guests, and this is something I love your ABCD. Because what I tend to do, my way around it is I have my list of these are the things that are really important. These are the things that are not so important. What do I feel like doing today? (laughs) And then it really doesn't matter if they're on the A list or the B list because I just do what I feel like doing that day because that's the way I am. But listening to you makes me realize that having that structure just saying, okay, this is your A list, you have to get through it no matter what is and then breaking it down to even ABCD, it sort of will, I think that will really help my brain go, okay, Carolyn, the A list, just do it. Like you have no choice. Mm -hmm. I had to do that. I, I struggle a little bit with ADHD and I will, if I will get down a rabbit hole faster than anybody's business, if I don't have the task prioritized. And I know that if I get those tasks done that are on my daily standup in, in ClickUp, I can, then go down any rabbit hole I want once those tasks are completed. Yeah, I, I'm i listening to you going, is that what ADHD is? Maybe I need to get checked because I'm like, I do that all the time. I thought that was just my brain. <laughs> I think some of that's just being a business owner. Some of the things that you want to do, the things that light you up. You don't want to do the things that you're like, oh. So we can automate some of those tasks that make you, 
<laughs> yeah. No, I'm definitely, okay, after here, note to self, I'm going to start organizing my tasks better. That's fantastic. I got that from Jennifer Dawn from Jennifer Dawn Coaching. She has some amazing training on YouTube. Uh, amazing as far as the ABCD training. Okay, Jennifer, I'll get the list off you and, and the link off you and I'll put in the show notes as well. So anyone else that's in this position can also go and get some tips on that as well. <laughs> and what are some pitfalls that you find that people fall into when they're trying to automate their business? They try to do it all at once. I think when you said automate five tasks at a time, keep your keep your spreadsheet as you're developing it and pick the five you want to put into your project management software. Some of that stuff you can actually keep in a spreadsheet. I just don't like to look in multiple different places. So if I can keep two to three places that I have to look, then I'm not going to get frustrated and go sit on Facebook and scroll for hours. Um, and I over exaggerating, but I know we've all been there. So I think if you spend some time, if you take time before you even move everything over in A, B, C, D, or prioritize the tasks that you think you can automate, if you're nervous about automation, maybe start with the D tasks at first so that you're not, you're not getting, um, overwhelmed in the process because the worst thing you can do in trying to develop progress is to get stuck and, and spin your wheels. So three to five that. I think that people think, okay, I'm going to automate more of my email systems and then they start the process and then they freak out and they're like, oh my God, this is too much. And then they give up and they think that they're not capable, but it's never that they're not capable. It's always the fact that it's just over, you've just taken too much on at one time. It's like, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Yeah, that's the... And, you know, I'm working with a, a woman at the moment and she's an ex-hairdresser. I'm an ex-hairdresser, so I can say this. Hairdressers are known as like, oh, we're just like, yeah, we're just, we're just hairdressers. So you just, we fall into this category. So straight away when I, like, when I was a hairdresser, I actually got asked once by a client. Oh, you free to you? Um, yes. So, they, you know, this is, this is like how hairdressers are seen. So straight away, this, uh, this woman, Martina, she's seen as like, oh, you're just a hairdresser. This woman, what she has done with her business over the last few months is absolutely mind blowing. And she said to me at the beginning, I will not be able to do it, Carolyn. Like, this is not my skill set. This is not what I'm good at. I'm like, trust me, I will take you through step by step. So I've coached her through everything. And she just messaged me this morning. She's like, oh, my God, I've got all of this stuff organized. And, and she's blown away. And I'm like, you're amazing. Like, good on you. And she's like, no, but it's your help. But yeah, okay, I've given you help. But at the end of the day, you did it. Like, you put it all together. And I think that's the thing that most people, they get freaked out. And then they say, I'm not capable. Um, I've done something wrong. I'm not good enough for it. But it's never, I've never met anyone in that situation. It's just that you need to do it step by step. And that's the, that's the key to it. It's similar to failure to plan that whole whatever that is. Um, so that's why I said keep your spreadsheet and just plan on which one you're doing. Email, moving your email system is a daunting task. My recommendation for doing that is just pick one email, one email a week that you're going to automate. If that one moves quickly, you can pick a second one for that week. But don't try to move everything for your email. It's going to take you weeks on weeks on weeks. Whereas if you do it, it's going to take you the same amount of weeks if you do it one to two a week versus trying to take on a whole system. We moved from one of my clients moved from active campaign into high level and she wanted it done in a month. And she had 20 years of coaching that we were, we had to move into that. That was a lot of work. It was a lot of lifting. And then to make sure your automations are set in place as far as all the follow-up emails, because she had a nurture sequence that was 52 emails long so that everybody got an email a week to just keep her top of mind. And that was, it's a lot more than people think it is. It's easier to actually create it in the place rather than recreate it and automate it in any place. So I had that exact same thing with my client, Beck, where she moved from HubSpot, she moved into Mind uh, Mind Body. She's a fitness coach. And now she's in Mind Body and then she hates Mind Body. So she's moved into my system and like literally in a three month process. Because when I met her, she was already moving into Mind Body. And she's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, I think you should just use my system. But she's like, no, 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 I've already signed up and blah, blah. And now she's like, oh, I can't use that system. It's not that good. So now she's moved over. And so the poor thing, she's now done two full moves 
in like a matter of a few months. Like, so she was like, yeah. And she kept apologizing. She's like, I'm sorry that I'm so behind with everything. I'm like, I totally understand. Like, I'm surprised that you're actually moving this quickly. So yeah, it's terrible to do those moves um, from like from another system. And sometimes it's worth it to get a VA to do some of that lifting. There are VA services out there. You can get them on Fiverr. I don't know if you have some available through you. Um, I have a fantastic VA that she likes figuring out the problems. So I don't have to spend some of that time, but I still have to prioritize tasks and whatnot for all of us with the automations. Um, I'm not sure what system you use, but I absolutely, like I said, I love um, high level because if somebody comes in in one place, everything I can automate for the responses for them and automate the emails. But it did take, I think we moved over in January to get all the kinks out. It took almost to March because you don't know what's not working until it's not working. Mm -mm. And that's just part of the process, I think. That's the part of the process. But I've been doing, like I said, digital marketing for 24 years now. And so over the years, it's just been absolutely mind-boggling how much things have changed. And I've just been on maternity leave for four years. So I've just come back after four years away from – I switched off. I sold my business because for me, I was like, if I don't sell my business, I'm going to keep working in it. So I completely switched off. I actually got rid of my laptop even because I went, I'm going to just raise my daughter. So I got rid of my laptop. I literally just took years off completely. And of course I was still sneaking around and checking what was going on. But when I came back properly, I was like, oh my God, this AI, this automation, it is mind blowing how amazing it has. It's made life so much easier. It's as much as there's a lot to it but it's just so easy now. And I think some of the businesses I had 20 years ago, I'm like, oh my God, if I had this technology back then, like the the things that I could have created. So yeah, it's, it's I think for people, I want them to know it can sound daunting. It can sound like it, it can sound overwhelming, but yeah, you you're not like, there's not a better time to be in the online business space than now. I 100% agree with you. I was just going to say it, I may make it seem harder than it is, and I, I don't want to do that, but I love the fin the little pieces of it all, and I've been around, I think I started in 05 when I got back from my wreck. Um, so I'm with you. The time and grade and time and service, so I love what I've been able to see change. I am absolutely, AI has been a blessing the automations are obviously a blessing. Think about the money you spent back before and now that stuff is already pre-built in a lot of places. And if I serve, we do um, business intensive days where we get into businesses and do some things, but we serve on the regular. We have 13 social media clients and I have a team of three. And we can do that because we're able to dig into automation. We're able to dig into AI and and capture their voice rather than back when you had a copywriter who had to really hone in and dial in. You still need copywriters for certain things, but you're able to do a lot of lifting before you get to a copywriter. So they're kind of finessing it rather than building it. Mm. No, it's so true. And I don't think that you're actually making it sound harder than it is. I think you're being really realistic because one thing I don't like is people that sugarcoat it and then they give you this like false impression of it's so easy and there's no work involved and then like the client jumps in and they're like what have you sold me this is not what I thought so yeah I think we need to be realistic that yes it's it is easy yes it is simple to do but that doesn't mean that there's no work at all at all yeah there's there's still going to be work and compared to before there's nothing compared to before so yeah they i don't think that you're making it sound easy i think you're giving it a good realistic viewpoint <laughs> the one thing and i'm sure i mentioned it earlier is you have to spend time on your business and automations is setting up those automations is spending time on your business because if you spend 10 minutes to 20 minutes to an hour now you've got all of that time you get back. So every time you create an automation, you get all that time back. You don't get it back immediately, but over time you don't have to do the lifting. I know because you've been in as long as I have. And it, spending time doing follow-up 
will eat your time alive. Will eat you alive. And that if you can create an automation and create some follow up through a system, you are developing a way to give you time back. Because you're not spending 20, 30 minutes every hour in your inbox getting ready to do follow up. Even if we used a VA, that's a VA's time that we can put somewhere else if because we don't need them to do follow up. There are certain things you still have to follow up on because people come to you differently. But if they come in looking for your service or your product, you can really nurture them. And just check in on the nurtures, make sure everything's working and, and just see what their responses are. But you don't have to spend all that time following up. And I think not only that, I think the other problem is, is that when you spend all that time on the follow up, it's also not systematized in the way that uh, you can analyze the data very well. By automating it, you can also um, easily analyze it. So if you set up an email, I was just talking about it on um when I was recording an episode about emails is that you can have um, one email go out with one subject line. And then the day later, if they don't open it, then you can have a different subject line on that same email. And then you can find out, well, actually I'm getting a lot more open rates there and click throughs there, but not there. If you're just following up with people manually and you're sending sporadic emails here and sporadic, and what am I writing in this email? And I'll just think about it on the fly then you end up with no um, no, uh, no way to analyze what you're doing and you don't know what's working and what's not. So not only are you saving time, but you're actually able to analyze and then you're going to give people a better service. They're going to get more better, better information. You can actually service people in a better way. I think that you know, there's so many steps that actually are fulfilled by having automation in your business. I can't. You said it perfectly. There's not staying up. There's nothing really more to add there because A-B testing is the way to get your market, you know what's working in marketing. Sometimes you have to A-B-C test, but you don't know what, what works if you don't if you don't attempt it. And so many people think, I've sent out this email, it's gold. But that is gold to you. It doesn't mean it's gold to the client or the prospect. The amount of times I've had people, I was just talking, uh, I, I coached someone yesterday and the way that like, I was trying to explain that you've got to, it's not about you and it's not about what you think. It's really about what the other person thinks. And the, by seeing that data, you can start to understand it. You've got to take your own ego out of it. So the amount of people that say to me, oh, I sent an email um, and I didn't get a, like a prospect from it. And it's like, okay, what was in that email? And then you find out that they're sort of like sending out all these random emails and they're not able to understand, like you said, they don't, they can't get their voice across properly. They're not getting their actual clear message across and they're not following up in time. There's just, yeah, there's just so many things going wrong that can be so easily solved in this day and age. And that's whether they're using your software, um, any, anything that is a full CRM is important. I think in a way, because if I'm, my team is answering or responding to things, I need to kind of look in to see how they're responding, but also to see how people are responding to the automations. The statistics are built in. If you take it out of that system, you can't see what's working and what's not working. I've worked in a sales environment before, um, as a digital marketer for a um, solo light or solo tube company. And our sales guy wasn't hitting the mark and it turned out he was make, trying to be funny and email. And we were, it was, we we're talking to purchasers that were um, in half million plus dollar homes, U S dollars in, in a city that's a very military town. So that kind of, because we couldn't get into what he was writing, we didn't know how he was responding and long story short, if you want to get the answers and you want to see what's working, what's not working, you got to use the system and you got to make sure you're systematizing your emails and, and automating things. If you, I love that you said you have the A and if A doesn't go out, you send out B, which is just the same email with a different subject line. That I love doing that. And I also love doing uh, where you send two out at the same time and some go to some buyers or purchasers or people in your network and some go to others. And I think it, both are very valuable. It's important to know what people want to see and want to hear from you. And ego is the absolute 
brick to success most of the time. It is the, it was going to stop you or it's going to slow your progress so, so much. Whereas if you can set the ego aside and say, Hey, I need help because I can't, I'm not hitting the mark. Reach out for help. Reach out for help because somebody else looking at it can tell you, I'm not reading the same thing you are. This wouldn't, I wouldn't open this. And I'm very blunt. So I tell people like the guy I was mentoring yesterday, I said, sorry, I'm just so blunt. I'm like, no, just no. <laughs> but do you want to make money? I Because the way I see it is, do you want to make money or not? Like if you don't want to make money, don't listen to me. It's fine. But if you want to make money, then I'm giving you my honest opinion of a lot of years of experience. Yeah. That's a huge. It, people need the bluntness. Because you can be blunt without being rude. You can be direct without being rude. You can say, no, that's not working. And this is why. We had a client that was a big, um, she was she owned a sarong business. And she was trying to talk to these itty bitty skinny girls. And I remember telling her, you can't, like, that's not who's purchasing the product. People who are purchasing your product are trying to cover up the cellulite. They're trying to look cute on the beach. They're trying all these things. We have to talk to her, but this is the client I want, but this is the client that's purchasing. Like, let's talk to her. And as soon as we were able to pivot that messaging, you could see the sales pick up, but it took three months to get her to put that aside because she was so hell bent on that. That was the ideal customer. And I was, I just couldn't get to her like, who do you see with cover-ups on the beach? So true, yeah. And that's that's exactly what I say to people is that you think that you're selling to one person but you don't understand the pain point. And like you said, that that skinny girl doesn't have that pain point of needing a sarong. So, yeah, it's it's very interesting and it's good to have that outside perspective that you can look in and say, this is what you need to think about. So I want to ask you to finish up, what would be one to three action steps people could take right away to make a difference in their business? A, B, C, D, tasking it. If that is what you need to do, prioritize your task. You can call them one, two, threes, whatever you need to do so that you know what is a priority for your business. As far as automating, when you develop that plan, until you can get the automation process down right, I'd start with the D tasks. Just because... You want to make sure you're getting things in the way they would, but one to two tasks a week or three to five, depending on how much time you have. And the third one is spend the time on your business, not just in your business, so you can continue to grow. And that spending time on your business could be developing the automations, developing processes, but it could also mean getting a coach and spending time with the coach to get you the answers that you need so that all of these prioritizing tasks and developing the automations will be easier for you because you can see the end, the light at the end of the tunnel. And Lisa, thank you so much. You work with veterans mainly and um, definitely I think that they love systems. So I think that you definitely can help them, which is fantastic. So if anyone wants to reach out and talk to you, how can they get in touch with you? Um, Developedabald.com. Um, I'll send that over to you. We'll put it in the show notes. I help everybody. My primary my ideal client is the veteran, and that's because we talked before the show. My husband and I both served, and we want to be able to serve. We all know the numbers of in the U.S. are insane as far as the amount that are committing suicide. So we want to be able to serve them and let them know that there's hope. Um, so, yes, they do love systems, and they thrive in systems because to them it's a check checklist. Um, and when you can create an automation that when they check it, everything goes the way they want it to, that's all the better. But you can find me. I'm developed of all designs. There is a guy that used to do shows in Philadelphia that's developed of all. But other than that, everything is that. Um, if you you can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, all the places. My TikTok, I don't spend as much time on, so that wouldn't be a place to find me. I don't do TikTok either, so I get it. <laughs> Sometimes I throw a video up, but. <laughs> Yeah, I think we'll be the ones on it next year probably and then, yeah, mm -hmm. we'll see. <laughs> Lisa, thank you so much. You are fantastic. Thank you so much for all your advice and help. I'm going to put all your links in the show notes so people can get in touch with you. Thank you so much for joining us today and thanks everyone for watching and keep watching the 14-Day Challenge.